Um, there is, it's a very fuzzy yarn. There is fuzz everywhere now. I think I got it all mostly off myself. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you'll forgive the kind of everything today. This is kind of a spur of the moment um, video recording decision, I guess, because today I am solving a mystery, I guess, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. But the reason this was kind of a spur of the moment video decision was because I just finished a big project, if you can see what's behind me, and if you follow me on Instagram you probably know what that is, um, and I I have had the cast on urge forever but I've been forcing myself to finish that bigger project and now that project is finished I want to cast something on and I want to cast something on before I can do that I need to solve a bit of a mystery so I'm going to take you on this journey with me this will be a little bit more of like a vlog style video not like an official knitting update or anything but yeah let's get into it <laughs> all right hopefully I'm staying in focus because it's been a while since I've filmed from like this far away and my camera doesn't always like to automatically focus on my face when I'm this far away but anyway I said I was solving a mystery today and the mystery is this skein of yarn right here um, this was gifted to me by my lovely cousin and cousin-in-law Josh and Amy it's so soft but the reason it's a mystery is I have no idea how much yarn there is here. Um, and that's no fault to them as the gifters or anything. It just didn't come with like a tag or anything with any yarn information on it, at least not when I received it. Um, so we're going to try and solve this mystery together right now while I prepare it to become my next project. Alright, so a few days ago when I was thinking about how I might use this in my next project. I texted Amy and I'm like, hey, what was the name of the farm that you got me this amazing yarn from? And she told me it was Woods Edge Farm. It's a local farm to them uh, where they live in New Jersey. And they got it at like a farmer's market or open air market or something like that that the farm was at. So, I was checking out the Woods Edge Farm website and shop. They do have a lot of their stuff um, on their website, um, including like honey and dryer balls and stuff. They do not, however, have their yarn listed on their website, which like, okay, that's super cool that um, it's like something you can't even get on their website, but it doesn't help me a lot with the information. So next step is I was looking at the stuff that they do have in their store and everything seems to be alpaca based so we have striped alpaca dress socks alpaca dryer balls alpaca boot socks alpaca sports socks um, so like shorty socks crew socks so that tells me okay this is definitely uh, some type of alpaca blend probably a hundred percent alpaca since they seem to specialize in that um and if I had guessed that I probably would have guessed that just because of its fuzziness here um I would have guessed that there at least would have been a little bit of alpaca in the blend somewhere but now I'm thinking it might be a hundred percent which is pretty cool um all right so that's step one step one was figuring out like the makeup of the yarn which is telling me from what I can discern, um, is telling me it is alpaca, an alpaca yarn. So next up is figuring out the weight of said yarn and the yardage. So that's step two, <laughs> I think. I'm on step two now, right? I am definitely getting out of frame a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so let's get into the weight and yardage next. Alright, you're getting a bit of a close-up here because my camera, like I said, doesn't automatically like to focus, so I'm just going to stay right here and show you a close-up of the yarn. So as you can see, it is natural colors. I don't think this has been dyed at all. It's kind of like a looser spun. Ooh, I'll try and stay in focus here. And then if I'm looking at it, if I have to guess, I would think this is a either a sport or a DK weight just going off of like visual thickness that I can see 
um, once I wind this up, I'll be able to get a better sense, I think, because there is a little bit of variance, too. Like, there are some thicker parts, some thinner parts, but overall, it has, like, a really cool look and spin to it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get this caked up, and we'll move on with figuring out how much I actually have. <laughs> So much fuzz everywhere. Oh my gosh. Alright, there we go. Alright, yeah, all the fuzz is off of me. Um, here's the cake it formed. It formed a really large cake, so now we're gonna break out some tools to figure out um, exactly how much yarn this is. So, step one is going to be to weigh it. I have my little electronic scale here, um, and I guess this is technically step 2A, because I said step 1 was figuring out its fiber content, so step 2A is to weigh the actual cake. So let's see what we get. Okay, it is coming to 235 grams. I should write that down. All right, it's going to 235 grams. Yeah, I definitely would have guessed it was over 100, just given the size of a cake that it made and how long it took to wind it up, but I was not expecting over 200, so there you go. So 235 grams of yarn. So that was step 2A, like I said. And so that's the first tool we used. Now we're gonna be using a second tool and go ahead and focus in on this. We'll do a close up again. There we go. So this is a, um, I guess like a weight finder. I don't, what's its real name? It probably has a real name that I'm not thinking of. Um, but I got this from my local yarn shop, Around the Table Yarns, and as you can see it has different, um, what would these be? I don't know, different ridges, I guess, 
in the wood for an indents. Um, and those are labeled, so super bulky, bulky, Aaron, worsted, DK, sport, fingering, and lace. And then we also have this little cutout that is an inch long, and that is so I can measure the wraps per inch. So if we're taking our yarn, let me find the end of it. If we take our yarn and just match it up to one of these indents, I think it matches pretty well with the DK. Um, like I said, it's a bit more of like a rustic spin, so there are some thicker and some thinner parts. So some could be more sport, some could be more DK. So let me go ahead and see the wraps per inch that I get on this. So I don't know the best way to do this. Maybe I should go from the center pole. Eh, we're all learning together right now, right? Okay, so I'm gonna line it up here, get the chain out of the way, and then we just wrap it around so that they aren't, the wraps aren't like laying on top of each other, they're, so that they're pretty tight. Okay, so that's four, five, six. Oh, they're kind of overlapping down here. Oh, all right, let's start that over. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm keeping it pretty flush with the wood of the tool the entire time. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, twelve, solid twelve. So twelve puts us right at sport. There we go. So, um, yeah, it's, I guess, wraps per inch wise, it is a sport weight, but I'm still holding true that it's kind of in between sport and DK because like I said there are some thicker parts like this section coming up is a little bit thicker than the sections I wrapped around so I think I'll be safe going with a DK or SWO if I can hold on to things DK or sport weight pattern when it comes to this alright so we figured out the weight in grams and now we're saying it's like a sport to DK weight. So next up is to figure out about how much yardage I might have. Okay, so right now I am Googling how much, um, like the average yardage of a, a DK weight yarn per 100 grams. The reason I'm Googling DK before you're like, oh no, you measured it as a sport. The reason I'm Googling DK is because I'm trying to be on the safer side of yardage, because if I Google sport and then I like assume I have that yardage, um, it'll probably end up with me losing yarn chicken on whatever project I choose. So I'm searching DK to be on the safer side, on the lower end of things. So the uh, top three results, one says 220 yards is kind of the average for a typical 100, 100 grams, that because that's what it normally is. Another says 190 to 300 yards. Um, well, that one says meters slash yards, so. Hmm. Um, another says 240 to 280 yards. Um, okay, so somewhere... Somewhere in the 200s, um, looking at some of the DK that I have in my stash, let's see, this one, 246, that one's a wool cashmere, this one's 100% wool, also 246, okay, um, that's something, so 246, 246, 
what's this one down here? 246. Well, those are all from the same person, so they're going to be the same. Um, oh, this is one. Mm -hmm. 274. Okay. So let's just be a little on the safer side and say 240. Um, so I have, where'd my notes go? So average DK yardage is, we'll just say 240, again being on the very safe side. Um, so that means we're doing math now, folks. Um, so 240 per 400 grams, 240 yards per 100 grams, that puts us at 2.4 yards per gram. Now this, as you may remember, weighed 235 grams. So we're going to multiply 2.4 times 2, nope, 235, and that puts us at 500... 64 yards. Again, being on the lower slash safer side of things, hopefully. Um, so that tells me I have 564-ish yards to work with. I shouldn't have put my phone down because now we're doing pattern research. Okay, so originally I was thinking um, this yarn, given it's like natural colors. It's got some tannish, grayish, whitish coloring in there, but it's very neutral and also very light, so I feel like it would hold texture really well. Um, so I was thinking initially, where is it? I should be getting close to it. Given that it's probably 100% alpaca, I don't think I want to make, um, like I could potentially have enough for like a crop top or something. Not really feeling that, given that I can already tell it's going to be very, very warm. I'm thinking of some type of scarf or shawl or shawlette. Um, so first thing that came to mind was the Laulu shawl by Sari Nordland. Um, that does take a DK weight. Let's see what the yardage, recommended yardage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yardage, 519. Okay, so I should have enough, which is great news. Um, I just think the natural coloring of this yarn would just show off those cables so well. If you watched my um, Comfy Cozy Knitting Plans video, you might remember that I was originally going to knit the Lalu shawl in these two, if I can get them out without knocking everything over. Um, this is Nonsense by Red Door Fiber Studio on Tweed Sock and Surrey? Yes, sorry. Um, I was originally going to knit the Laulu shawl in that and just like completely copy Kate's Laulu shawl that she has. Um, but now that I have this and I don't have to hold two yarns together and I don't have to wind up two yarns, I'm thinking I might use this for it. Um, so... Yeah, that's really good news. I was worried, like, it would be just slightly more yardage than I had estimated, and I would have to find something else, but given that the requ the yarn requirements are 520 yards, which is below even my low estimate was, I think I might just go with this, the Laulu shawl. So, sorry for no extra drama in this video, but that's where we're at. Um, if you have other recommendations, particularly maybe what I can use the Surrey and Tweed sock pairing for now, let me know, because I'll probably want to use that for something similar to the Laulu shawl. Um, 
just because I like the combination. I like how it held the cables and the other ones that I've seen. Um, oh, this is pretty. Right now I'm looking at the uh, Terpsichore scarf, also by Sari Norlin. Um, maybe I can use that combo for that. So yeah, anyway, conclusion. Um, I will probably be casting this on tonight um, to finally have like a DK project back on my needles. Thank goodness. Um, and this is probably going to become a Laulu shawl. We'll see if I can finish it in time for maybe Christmas or New Year's to wear it during those celebrations. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, glad to take you on this little journey with me, this little side quest here. Um, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you have any other recommendations for what I could use the tweed sock and suri combo on, let me know in the comments. This is 100% becoming a Lalu shawl, so you don't need to um, give me recommendations for this, because I will be casting this on probably in an hour or two, <laughs> so this will probably be well into being made by the time I post this video. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for joining me. Um, we'll probably post another knitting update soon, talking about the big project I just finished. Um, and yeah, other than that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I just had a great part of my day figuring this out and getting some good news that I, that I can use it for the pattern I wanted to use it for. So, yeah, that's all I got, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!